For the love of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, let us have a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And for the love of the awaited saviour of humanity, Imam al-Mahdi, ajjalallahu ta'ala faraj al-sharif, salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillahi Alladhi Kana Mawjoodan Qabla Hudoot Al Ashya Wa Yabqa Ba'da Fana Al Ashya Tafarrada Bil Awwaliyyati Wal Qidam Wa Wasama Kulla Shayin Ma Adahu Bil Fana Wal Adam Kama Qala Azza Shayinuhu Kullu Shayin Halikun Illa Wajha وكل نفس ضائقة الموت وقال كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذي الجلال والإكرام سبحان من لا يخفى عليه اختلاف النيات ولا يعزب عنه معاصي العباد في الخلوات سبحان الله الذي منه خلقة العباد وإليه المعاد فمن يعمل مثقالا ذرة خيرا يرى ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يرى نشهد أن لا إله إلا هو الملك الذي لا ينازع في ملكه ولا يضاد في حكمه ونشهد أن محمدا سيد المرسلين وخير المبشرين والمنذرين صلى الله عليه وآله الهداة المهديين من ركب سفينتهم نجا واحتدى ومن تخلف عنها ظل فغرق وهوى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما Awaited Savior of Humanity, Imam Al-Mahdi عليه السلام My respected Elders, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Usikum wa nafsi bi taqwa Allah wa lwara'a fi deenina. I call myself and all of you towards God consciousness and piety in the way of our religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So far, we are almost halfway in to the holy month of Ramadan. And begun to experience those changes in practices and behaviors that are associated and aligned with the practices of the holy month of Ramadan. The idea has been for us to be able to traverse away from the superficial to go deeper into the means and the realities of what we have been doing. For one person, a person may fast, a very simple fast, which is for simply them to abstain from food and water and other such things. For another person, they will fast beyond that. They will fast their limbs in service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for a third person, they will fast from everything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These three fasts are not and cannot be considered the same. In the Holy Quran and in the Ahadith, we find that there is so much discussion around moving away from the superficial of an action to understanding the realities of that action and what truly sows the seeds of change within us such that these seeds end up blossoming within ourselves. For this afternoon's discussion, inshallah, what I want to be able to look at is how the Qur'an and Ahadith speak about this issue of genuine change within behavior and separating it from superficial understanding of the same practices. In the Holy Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Rum, chapter number 30 of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out a particular criticism of certain types of people. He says, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا 
All that they know is the apparent of this world. Nothing deeper. It is a completely superficial level of understanding of what is going on in front of their eyes. We do not want to succumb to that very same criticism. All of the actions that we do, we understand that there is a zahir and that there is a batin to those same actions. What a person sees from the outside is that the Muslim community is abstaining from food and water and such things from sunrise to sunset. But in reality, the fast that we are hoping to achieve is much deeper than that. It is to fast from everything that distracts me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I can ensure that my fast has moved beyond these stages to a higher level, then surely I am accomplishing the fast that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked from me. So if you open your Qur'ans, you will turn to chapter number 22, Surat Al-Hajj. From verse number 37 is the main verse that we want to look at. But you can look at it from a couple of verses before. From verse number 34 if you want. Chapter number 22, Surat Al-Hajj. Verse number 34. Now you all know that when you go for Hajj, there are much deeper practices than the ones that we are superficially doing. When a person performs tawaf, are they simply just walking around you know, a black box seven times? No one in their right mind would imagine that this is all that we are simply doing. In Surah Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that the practices that he has set for us have a much deeper meaning to them. Have a look at verse number 34. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa li kulli ummatin ja'alna mansakan li yadhkuru ismallah ala ma razakahum min bahimatin al an'am. For every people, for every nation, we have laid down a ritual sac sacrifice. We have established and set practices for them to be able to sacrifice in our way, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's way. That they may pronounce the name of Allah over the cattle that he has provided them. So there is a sacrifice that Allah has set. And then look at the next verse, verse 35. Immediately he explains that those who participate in these rituals, there are some who will see it as very ritualistic. They will come and participate because it is wajib. There are people who will come and participate because it's the communal thing to do and they are scared to do otherwise. But there are others who participate in it and the entire being shudders in that cause. Verse 35. There are those whose hearts shiver and shudder when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned. In the previous verse, Allah said, look, I want you to mention Allah's name when the sacrifice is being done. You need to mention Allah's name. Do the dhikr of Allah at that point. But there are some that when the dhikr of Allah is mentioned, their being is present. Their participation in that very same action to the person next to them is entirely different. Now if you scroll down to the next verse, verse number 36, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that there are certain sacrifices that he has set. Amongst them are the sacrifice of camels as the symbols for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, budna ja'alnaha lakum min sha'a'ir allahi lakum fiha khayr. Fadhkur usmallahi alayha sawaf. Again, Allah mentions the dhikr of Allah. We have appointed sacrificial camels amongst the symbols of devotion to Allah. There is much goodness in them for you. So make them stand at the time of sacrifice and pronounce the name of Allah over them. Now verse 37 is the focus of our discussion here in these ayat. 
Look at how Allah qualifies the difference between a superficial understanding, what people ascribe or think is important to these actions, versus what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is the essence of these actions. Len, you see in the Arabic language, len means never. Never ever will this occur. It is a complete negation. Not lam with a meme, which means it may have occurred in the past, it may occur in the future, but it's not happening now. No. Len. Len yanalallahu luhumuha wala dima'uha. Never does their flesh nor blood reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, when we give a sacrifice, don't imagine that this very outward part, part, you know, this outward act is going to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does Allah need the blood of animals? No. Does Allah need the flesh of animals? No. Walakin yanaluhu taqwa minkum. What does reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the piety that is associated to that act. How you have been present in that act. What it has meant to you in that act. What the intention was in that act. How it has changed you. That is what reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can see throughout all the actions that we do, there is the very superficial. And we sometimes, sometimes attach ourselves to the superficial. Shah Ramadan comes, I must finish the Quran in one month. Ask a person how much they have taken away from it. They won't be able to tell you one verse the meaning of it. A robot. You could press play on YouTube. The robot will recite the verse. What difference has it made to our life? For us to come and participate, for example, each night to recite Dua al-Iftitah, but for not one verse to penetrate the soul, or for one verse to make a change in my life. What was I doing throughout this month that the time just went away so quickly that nothing changed within myself? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all of these rituals and actions, it doesn't reach me, but the piety that you bring to this action, that reaches me. Now there's a hadith I want to focus on for this week. And for you and I to reflect on it, to take it away with us. And you'll see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expands on this notion that there's a difference between the very superficial outward action that we do and the essence and the practice that he wants from us, from within those actions. This hadith is mentioned in Al-Kafi. And it is attributed to our sixth Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq Salawatullah wa salamuhu alayhi. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam explains a sermon that Prophet Musa alayhi salam was giving to his community. And in the midst of that sermon, someone didn't act that he imagined was pious, but in reality, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu revealed a response to Musa alayhi salam to tell that person, for them to realize that sometimes we create cultures of practice, we create ideas and attribute ideas to things that we think are actually beneficial to us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking for something far simpler from us. The hadith is as follows. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says, Thayna Musa ibn Imran ya'idhu ashabuhu. Prophet Musa alayhi salam was, was, was speaking, he was addressing, warning his community, his companions. إِذْ قَامَ رَجَلٌ فَشَقَّ قَمِيصُهُ This man stood up in the, in the middle of the sermon and tore at his collar. So what's being understood here is that the sermon of Musa reached such a point 
that this person was so emotionally involved, he was overcome by emotion that he tore his collar as a sign to Prophet Musa alayhi salam that he was committed to Prophet Musa alayhi salam's sermon. فَأَوْحَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِلَيْهِ Allah Jalla Jalaluhu revealed to Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, قُلْ لَهُ O Musa, say to this man, لَا تَشَقُّ قَمِيصَكْ Do not bother to tear at your collar. It has no real value in it. وَلَكِنْ إِشْرَحْ لِي عَنْ قَلْبِكْ But rather, open up your heart to me. Can you see, Allah understood that this action actually had no value to it. In the eyes of the man and maybe in the eyes of Banu Israel, doing this act had some value because it was an emotional response because maybe the community reacted in that particular way. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu reprimanded him and said, what is the value in doing this? How does it prove that anything other than maybe for a moment you were interested in what had been said? But rather what I want from you Ishrah li an qalbik. Open up your heart to me. Now, one of our great maraja al kiram, His Eminence, Al Imam Al Mujahid, Ayatullah Sayyid Ali Khamenei, may Allah preserve him, comments on this hadith. And he says the following He says, It could be that for that moment when this person tore his collar, he was. Very sincere with Allah. So then why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reprimand him for this? He said, Ayatullah Khamenei, he said, because even in a, an emotional moment, it doesn't necessarily prove that there is going to be any long-term change in that person. The proof is actually in the pudding, so to speak. That a person can continue and plant that seed and it actually germinate and blossom and bring about change. If that emotion in a week's time, in a month's time, has actually carried you forward in behavioral change, then it is of value. But clearly in the context, Allah would not be revealing to Musa alayhi salam to tell him of a better way unless Allah knew that it was nothing more than an emotional moment. But there was no long, long, long term change in that person. Walakin ishrah li an qalbik. Open up for me your heart. Ayatullah Khamenei explains the meaning of this part of the hadith. He says simply, lift up all of the things that block Allah from being present in your heart. That's the meaning of it. And this is how we go back to the point that we started at the beginning of the discussion. A person can fast one of three ways. A person may fast by simply abstaining from what is prohibited to them in the month of Ramadan. A person will not eat and drink. A person will not participate in the muqtalat, those things that invalidate the fast. The reality is anyone can do this, correct? A child can do this. We have children that practice for the month of Ramadan, don't they? It's not wajib upon them. They're not balik. But they will want to fast because it is interesting to them because there's a spirit there because we are training them. An eight-year-old, a 12-year-old will abstain for the full day without food and water. Will you accept that that's the full fast? No, I wouldn't and I know you wouldn't. A higher level of fast is for us to control all of the limbs. For example, our eyes, our ears, our tongues, our hands, our feet, so that the normal things that we do, that our eyes glance towards, our, our ears listen to, or our tongue participates in, that actually we are fasting our body from those things as well. The third level of fasting is the one that you and I want to be able to reach. And that is where Everything that distracts us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we fast from. 
It no longer becomes a hindrance. It no longer becomes a time-wasting activity. It no longer becomes something that becomes somehow more important than all of the other potential things that we can do within this month. Here we begin to move away from a very superficial practice of fasting to a much deeper level of fasting. And this is something that you and I want to be able to do. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says within this ayah, لَن يَنَالُ اللَّهُ لُحُومُهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا The flesh of these sacrifices, the blood of these sacrifices, it never reaches Allah. وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْكُمْ What reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the taqwa that we bring to these actions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be able to fast better in this month, help us to be able to reach the holy month of Ramadan and help us to be able to cling to those actions that are going to be beneficial for our development and not those actions that are going to stifle our development, especially in the holy month of Ramadan. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa la asr inna al-insan lafi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين أما بعد awaited savior of humanity Imam Al Mahdi عليه السلام my respected teachers elders brothers and sisters السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I call myself and all of you 